for teaching children about wildlife, the RSPB claims many simply aren't attractive to birds and animals. Rushbeer Hall Primary School has had a bird club for seven years. It started when the pupils themselves expressed a wish to do a spot of bird watching. Today, a nature trail circles the entire school with ponds, orchards, marshes and a specially built hide. Part of the national curriculum, of course, involves study of the natural environment and there are so many activities that you can plan with children of all ages in these sort of surroundings. This week, the RSPB launched a guide to help schools make their grounds more attractive to birds, insects and wild flowers. It's fun to watch birds, see what they're doing at times of year. They all do different things each time of year. Oh, well, we learn about different plants and what animals like their habitats and uh, different insects. You see quite loads of green finches all on the nuts here. Blue tits, great tits. Um, we've do you think you would have got so interested in birds had there not been the bird club at the school? Um, not really, no. Because if there wasn't a bird club at school, I wouldn't really um, enjoy watching birds. Here at Rushmere Hall, there are places for children with severe hearing difficulties, and it's a chance for these pupils to excel. The RSPB believes schools must be encouraged to make more use of school grounds. It has a relevance to a wide cross-section of the curriculum by doing things such as ringing and weighing and measuring the learning about mathematics, by looking at where the birds uh, actually migrate to and from, the learning about geography, and the learning how different parts of the environment are all interrelated. And I think it engenders a responsible attitude in them towards wildlife and the countryside. Even schools with limited space can get involved with bird tables and feeders. But as Rushmere Hall has found out, children can get so involved it can cost a fortune in bird food. Lindsay Brook, Ipswich.